Hello and welcome once again to Shepherd of the Valley's weekly video services. As always, I'm Pastor Dave Deckard and you are here in a special week. This is the Sunday of Pentecost, the festival when we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming to Jesus' disciples. We'll talk about that in just a second, but as we gather together, let us pray together the prayer of the day. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel this day comes from the 15th and 16th chapters of the Gospel of John. Jesus said, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me where are you going, but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I will go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. So on this day of Pentecost, we have the story of the Holy Spirit coming to Jesus' disciples. Usually in church, we read the famous words from the book of Acts where the disciples are in a room and then the windows blow open and the Holy Spirit descends in tongues that are like fire and immediately they're inspired and they go out and preach in the street. And it's a wonderful story that absolutely marks the beginning of the church and really the beginning of the spreading of the word of Jesus Christ to the rest of the world world beyond that small group who knew him. But you know what? There's something even more personal and I think in many ways more interesting about this day because it helps answer for us that great question, where is God? Now, Jesus in this Gospel of John talks about in a sense, leaving his disciples, at least leaving their field of vision, that they won't be able to see him anymore, that they will wonder where he is. But he says this is actually not a bad thing for them because they are going to perceive their relationship with God in a new way that answers this question, where is God, in a much more intimate and personal fashion than if Jesus himself even were with them. If Jesus was with them, you know, they'd be able to offload a lot of the stuff to him. This happens to pastors all the time. Oh, pastor's here so he can preach, or pastor's here so I shouldn't say a prayer with this person. Pastor can do it or whatever. There's also the obvious problem that if Jesus is there in one spot with one person, then he's not going to be with another person who is a hundred or a thousand or a million miles away. So in both cases, you have this idea of God separate from people, either separate in function, he's the prayer, he's the preacher, and I'm not, or separate in location, he's here and not there, he's with these people and not those people. Jesus turns that all on its ear through this proclamation in the Gospel of John. He's saying, I'm physically going to not be here where you can see me. That is an amazing thing because someone is going to come for you. Another expression of God, the advocate or the spirit. And he, Jesus says the spirit will do a few things for you. First of all, 
the Spirit will accompany you. The Spirit will be with you, guiding you and inspiring you all the time. Now, this is a great word of comfort. We are taught to look for God up in the heavens or in great and holy moments, even that moment in act. Well, why isn't tongues of flame coming down right now and we get to see? Well, you know, again, if that happened in one moment, where is God in all the other moments? Jesus says God's not going to work like that. Instead, the answer to the question, where is God, is really simple. God is with you every moment, every day. God sends the advocate, the spirit, to be with you in your ordinary lives when you wake up, when you drink your coffee, when you go to work or whatever it is that you do, when you come home, when you talk with friends, when you're in big crowds or when you're all alone. God is still with you. The advocate the Spirit accompanies each and every one of us, no matter who we are, no matter where we are. God is not confined to one location or one group of special people. Instead, you are among the special people whom God loves, and God accompanies you every day. And Jesus says the Spirit will do a couple of other things. First of all, the Spirit will advocate. First of all, for God. The Spirit will translate God's word, God's presence into your life in your own way. And we have no idea how this is going to happen precisely. We know that it comes at its source probably from things like scripture, maybe for you for church or these videos or whatever. Somewhere there is a fountain of grace that's not you and not me. There's a source beyond us. But what that source, what that presence of God does is different in each and every one of our lives. It's going to look different depending on your age and your background and your language and your whatever it is. But that's okay because the Spirit is the great whisperer, the great translator who takes whatever it is that God is and translates it to and through you so that you experience God and through you and your particular life, other people get to experience God in a very unique and interesting way. The way the Spirit speaks God through you will be different than the way the Spirit speaks God through me, and that is a good thing. And now when we get together, we don't just perceive ordinary people that we judge and decide, well, am I going to be friends with or not friends with or what can they do for me? What value do they have? Instead, we already know. We know that we are children of God. We know that when we see another person, God is speaking through them and to them in some way that we probably don't understand, that maybe they don't even understand, but is real and true and persistent and consistent. And so when we meet each other, this becomes a new way of meeting God. And instead of asking, where is God? we begin to ask, how is God speaking to me today through the life of this other person? And I may not even know them. I may not agree with them. They may be very different than I am, but God is still with them, and God is still speaking through them. And my job is to try to figure that out by listening, by helping translate, by being curious and being respectful and regarding them as important just as I regard God as important. And when we do this, God springs up in a thousand ways in our community just like God did among those disciples in that first Pentecost. And all of a sudden, the world is alive with this wind, this spirit, this growth. And life becomes an eternal process of discovery and revelation and translation and communication, all of which end up beautiful and all of us, all of which ends up growing us in God. 
This is an amazing purpose for individuals and for communities like churches, but it's not limited to churches. It also happens in, in your offices, in your schools, in your homes, wherever you are, wherever God is speaking, advocating, and present, this happens. And part of the purpose of your life and mine is to perceive this, to trust in it, and to continue speaking it and sharing it with each other. So all of us get to perceive and know more about God as God continues to accompany and talk to and talk through each and every one of us. Regard today as an opportunity for you to go out and discover more about God and to share more about God, whether you do that in explicit language like I'm doing in this sermon or whether you do this in ordinary language and actions of kindness and love and curiosity with your friends and neighbors, it all works as long as we understand the spirit accompanying us and working in our lives and celebrate it and look for it each and every day. Amen. How good, Lord, to be here. Your glory fills the night. Your face and garments like the sun shine with unborrowed light. How good, Lord, to be to behold where Moses and Elijah stand your messengers of old fulfiller of the past and hope of things to be we hail your body glorified and our redemption see before we taste our See your kingdom come. We long to hold the vision bright and make this hill our home. How good, Lord, to be here, yet we may not remain. But since you bid us leave the mount, come with us to. Having heard God's word, let us pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for sending the Spirit to advocate for us, to whisper in our ears, to walk with us every day. We know that your presence is with us whether we perceive you or not. And we glorify and make known your gift of presence with us that lifts us up in every moment, inspires us, and guides us to things beyond our understanding that serve you and the world around us. Help us to perceive better your calling for us and help us to do as the Spirit does for us, to hear and understand your word, to translate it into the language of the people around us and to serve them in love as you continue to serve us so that all might know the goodness of your name through our works, through our hands, and through our lives. Amen. And in the spirit of that goodness, we invite you to gather bread and wine or whatever you have on hand so we can celebrate together the sacrament of Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. We invite you now to take the bread and the cup and to share them with the people next to you, saying the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are watching this by yourself, you may partake of the elements as I offer them to you, knowing that God and God's Holy Spirit are with you every day, filling you infinitely with love, forgiveness, and purpose so that you can share those same things with the people around you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. May the spirit of this Pentecost day and season inspire you to share God's love by serving your neighbors as we all are called to do. And if you'd like to be a part of a community that focuses on those things and does the same, you are welcome to come and explore your relationship with God here. We meet every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on the corner of Five Mile and Victory in Boise. You're welcome to join us. You'll find a warm welcome. Also, you can find us at myboisechurch.org if you'd like to find other videos or know more about us. Until we meet again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.